Okay, so for the next lesson, we're going to be talking about complex numbers. This is section 1-3. And when we're talking about a complex number, we had talked about this a little bit earlier. Remember, we talked about we have like general numbers, right? Any combination of digits that you can come up with. From numbers, we said that we could break them up into real numbers and imaginary numbers. What an imaginary number was, was whatever number you get when you take the square root of a negative. Um, so a complex number is what we get if we combine these two. Typically, uh, the form for a complex number is A, which is the real part, plus BI which is the imaginary part. So that's what a complex number looks like. Now in order to uh, do these kind of problems, let's make some definitions, okay? So i means the square root of negative one. So going forward, whenever we have an answer, we're not going to have a negative inside of a square root. If we have a negative inside of a square root, that's going to turn into i, which is what we're going to write as our answer. i squared, by definition, just means negative 1. It's not like i times itself. Like you can't do the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 and get positive 1. It, it doesn't work like that. When you have radicals, you're only allowed to multiply radicals if both of these are not negative. So that's just the definition, okay? Just remember that i squared is negative 1. But going forward, we could figure out what i to the third is. i to the third is really just i times i squared, right? Because remember, if you multiply, you add exponents. Well, i squared was negative 1. Negative 1 times i is just negative 1i or just negative i. Same thing with i to the fourth. When we're figuring out i to the fourth, that's really just i squared times i squared, which is negative 1 times negative 1 or 1. So what I would like you to remember going forward is just remember uh, that i is just the square root of negative 1. Try to remember i squared is negative 1. And from those, we could figure out what i to the third or i to the fourth is. Most students just memorize i, i squared, i to the third, and i to the fourth. OK, so now let's go on to some examples here. What if I asked you to write each number as the product of a real number and i. Just do a couple examples. These are pretty easy. So like the square root of negative 4, what would the answer for that be? Well, remember what we said. Anytime you take the square root of a negative, it's going to turn into i. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's write the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. We're allowed to do this because both of those radicals aren't negative. The square root of 4 is 2, and by definition, the square root of negative 1 is i. So that would be the answer for this. And then what about the same thing with the square root of 70, or negative 70? Well, we could break this up. The square root of 70 times the square root of negative 1 the way we take care of 70 is we write 7 and 10. 10 is 2 and 5, so we, we can't break the square root of 70 anymore, but we know the square root of negative 1 is i, right? So because we can't break up the square root of 70, we're just going to write the square root of 70 times i. But we don't want to write it like that because it, it could look like the i is inside the square root, which is a little confusing. So generally, we always put the imaginary number in front. 
Next, let's talk about how to find each product or quotient. So what if we had the square root of negative 3 times the square root of negative 3? Now remember what we said, you can't multiply those. You can't say this is the square root of, of 9 because you, you're not allowed to multiply radicals if both of the radicals are negative. So let's do this. Let's take out this and just write it as square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1. Same thing with this. Square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1. Now the square root of negative 1 was just i. So this turns into i root 3 times i root 3. When we multiply radicals, we can multiply the outside numbers. i times i is i squared, just like x times x is x squared. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. Well, i squared, that was one of the definitions I asked you to remember. So this is negative 1 times 3. Our answer for this problem is just negative 3. How about something like this? What if we had the square root of negative 20 divided by the square root of negative 2? All right. Well, we have two radicals separated by a fraction. We could do this two different ways. We can combine the radicals, or we could just do things separately. So one way that we could do this is we could just say this is the square root of negative 20 over negative 2, which is the square root of 10. And there's nothing we could do from there. That's just the answer. Another thing we could do is we could actually write it as the square root of 20 times the square root of negative 1 divided by the square root of 2 times the square root of negative 1, which would give us i root 20 divided by i root 2. The i's would cancel. And the square root of 20 over the square root of 2, we could just make that one big happy fraction Square root of 20 divided by 2 would give us the square root of 10. So it looks like the first way might be a little bit faster, but either way you get the same answer. What if we had a problem like this? If I ask you to write negative 8 plus the square root of negative 128 over 4 in standard form. Okay, so first let's take care of that radical. Square root of negative 128. First thing we could do is let's just take out that i right away. Square root of negative 1 is i, right? And then the square root of 128 we could write as 2 and 64. And we could actually reduce that, right? We don't have to keep going. I showed you a few different ways to simplify radicals. We could break up 64 into 2 and 32 and then take out our groups of 2. But as soon as you get a perfect radical, you could just write it like this. Square root of 2 times square root of 64. So really this is just 8. So the square root of negative 128 would be 8i root 2. So this turns into negative 8 plus 8i uh, root 2 all over 4. And you can't just do this um, because, remember, you're dividing the whole top by 4. So if we're going to do that, let's do negative 8 over 4 plus 8i root 2 over 4, which just gives us negative 2 plus 2i root 2. We could do 8 divided by 4. We are dividing the whole top by 4. You can't just pick and choose, you know, one of those terms. You know, it's something, a common mistake. People just do 8 divided by 4 like that and write 2, but that's not correct. What about the negative 8? I mean, he, you know, they probably feel left out, right? The whole top divided by 4. So now let's do some simplifying problems. Let's simplify 3 minus 4i minus 
2 plus 3i. We have a negative in front, so we'll go ahead and distribute this. I mean, there's no number in front here. If you want to distribute a 1, you could do that if you want, but 3 minus 4i minus 2 minus 3i. We'll combine our like terms. The real part always comes first, so 3 minus 2 is 1. Negative 4i minus 3i is negative 7i. Those are pretty easy. Let's try multiplying. i behaves just like x or any other variable. So let's do 2 minus 3i times 2 plus 4i. So let's do 2 times everything. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 4i is 8i. Negative 3 times everything. So negative 3i times 2 would be negative 6i minus 12 i times i is i squared. So we'll combine our like terms, 4 plus 2i. But what did we say i squared was? Negative 1, right? This is going to turn into 12. We can combine that with the 4. So 12 plus 4 is 16 plus 2i would be our best answer. Now I asked you to simplify, right? So that, that's simplified. Simplified just means combine like terms. I mean, technically, you could take out a 2 here. But is that simplified? No. I mean, that's factored. Factor means write as a product. It's not what I asked you to do. I asked you to combine like terms, simplify. This would be the best answer. But sometimes people don't know the difference between simplify, factor, and other vocabulary words. What if we had a problem like this? 3 over i. Now we talked about radicals before, and we said that you're not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. That's bad manners. Well, i is just a radical, right? i is the square root of negative 1. We're not going to convert it here. Let's just get rid of the i in the denominator. We could do that by multiplying the top and bottom by i. We get 3i over i squared. Because i squared is negative 1, the answer would just be negative 3i. It's similar if we have two terms in the denominator, like 3 plus 2i over 5 minus i. When we talked about radicals, we said if there's two terms in the denominator, we use what's called the conjugate. Conjugate just means it's the same thing, but we change the sign in the middle. And it's kind of like being a Chuck E. Cheese where it corners that whack-a-mole, right? So let's go ahead and distribute out the whole top. We'll distribute out the whole bottom, and let's see what happens. Uh, 3 times 5 is 15 plus 3i plus 10i plus 2i squared forget i times i is i squared. And in the denominator, we have 5 times 5 is 25, plus 5i, minus 5i, minus i times i is I, minus i squared. We'll combine our like terms. Uh, 3i and 10i. And remember, i squared is just negative 1, right? So this is really just 2 times negative 1, or negative 2. In the denominator, the whole idea was these terms cancel out, and we'll get 25 minus i squared, which was negative 1. 15 minus 2 is 13 plus 13i, all divided by 26. Now, we did combine our like terms, but, I mean, what if I asked you to simplify this? 1 plus 3 over 8. I mean, would you leave 4 eighths as the answer, right? No, you would cancel out a common factor. So one thing that we could do from here is we could take out a factor of 13 from the top with a factor of 13 from the bottom. And our best fully simplified answer would be 1 plus i over 2. Whenever you simplify, you want to combine like terms and cancel out common factors. Maybe I'll add that to our definition over here. So simplify, combine like terms, and cancel common factors.
what about if we had a problem like this, where it was i to the negative third? Well, we know a negative exponent tells us that that switches the position, right? So this is 1 over i to the third. Now, what was i to the third? Remember your definitions? We have i is the square root of negative 1. I asked you to remember i squared, which was negative 1. i to the third, we had negative 1 times i. And then we know that i to the fourth was just 1. I asked you to remember at least the first two. And from the first two, we could figure out all four. So i to the third is really just negative i. We don't want to have an i in the denominator, so just like we did before, let's multiply the top and bottom by i. We know that i squared is negative 1. So our answer for this would just be i. Some more fun problems. This is memorable. People remember doing these. What if I asked you what's i to the 8th? Well, we only know the first four, right? So there's actually two ways to do this. I'll show you the way that I do it. Most of my students prefer to do it a different way. So as my friend used to say, different strokes for different folks. You do whatever way you prefer. But I do want to show you all the possible ways to do this. One way to do it is to write as a power of i squared. So watch, ready? i to the 8th is really just i squared to the 4th. Well, i squared was negative 1, and negative 1 to an even power is always a positive answer. So if you have negative 1 to an even power, the answer is going to be positive 1. If you have negative 1 to an odd power, the answer is going to be negative 1. The answer for this is just 1. That's how you do it using the technique that I do. Uh, the, one of my students showed me this. His name was Corey, and this is going back a few years ago in college. But he told me the way his teacher taught is you divide the power by 4, and the answer is the remainder. The reason why you divide by 4 is because i to the 5th would be 1 times i. i to the 6th would be i to the 2nd times 3, or negative 1. i to the 3rd, or I'm sorry, i to the 7th would be i to the 6th times i, or just negative i, and then i to the 8th is 1. So you can see that we have this pattern, right? Every four times this pattern repeats. So if we get a remainder of 3, the answer would be i to the third or negative i. If we got an answer where the remainder was 1, the answer would just be i. That's how this technique works. So like i to the eighth, what's 8 divided by 4? The answer is 2, right? The remainder would be nothing. So what's i to the 0 power? The same as any number to the 0 power, 1. I'll show you a few more examples like this so you kind of understand how this works. What about if I asked you i to the 17th? Now using my technique, we can't really write that as a power of 2, right? 2 doesn't go into 17. So what I would do is I would take out an i to the first, and i to the first times i to the 16th is i to the 17th. I would write the 16 as i squared to the 8th, because power to a power would be 16. And negative 1 to the 8th would just be 1. So the answer would be 1i, or just i. Using Corey's technique, Corey was a student of mine at CCM. Let me just copy this here. So we could reference this. 
So let's take 17. It's 17 divided by 4. What's the remainder? Well, 4 goes into 17 four times with one left over, right? We're concerned about that remainder. It's 1, so the answer would be i to the first. So his way might, you know, is pretty quick. Let's do two more. What about i to the 201? Okay, so doing my technique, 2 doesn't go into 201, so we would take out an i to the first, and we'd be left with 200. So we could write 200 as i to the second to the hundredth power, or i times negative 1 to the hundredth, which would just be i. Using this other technique, the question would be, what's 201 divided by 4? Well, I know 4 goes into 200, right? If you do have a calculator handy or you feel like doing this on your own, 201 divided by 4, it actually goes in 50 times with a remainder of 1. So your answer would be i to the first. So you get the same answer either way. And then our last problem from this section, I'll try to come up with a good one here. Um, let's do 27. So how about i to the 27th? Pick whatever way you like better. Using my way, I know 2 doesn't go into 27, so I'm going to write i to the 1st times i to the 26th, because that's the same thing as i to the 27th. This would be i times i squared to the 13th i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 13th is negative 1, so negative i would be the answer. And then if we divide it by 4, well, 4 goes into 27 uh, 6 times. 6 times 4 is 24, and there's a remainder of 3. So the answer would be i to the 3rd which I asked you to remember. If you're going to use Corey's way, you have to know the first four. This is really just i times i squared anyway. So it's i times negative 1, or just negative i. You get the same answer. So try the homework for this. This is a, a very popular problem on exams, so you want to make sure you know how to do this uh, any of the two ways that I showed you.